Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we're ready for the event. Hey, HOU TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KHOU TV. How do you hear us? Hey, this is Space Station. We hear you loud and clear. Fantastic, gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time. Glad to be with you today. First question, Mr. Fossum, how are you holding up after uh, your time? I imagine your lengthiest time up there. Oh, no, this is, uh, it, the time has gone by in a flash. It, it's been, the calendar says it's been five and a half months. To me, it seems more like five and a half weeks. If you ask my wife, it's probably more like five and a half years. Understood, understood. Uh, you, are, you are that busy. Five and a half months goes by in a flash. Oh, it goes by in a flash, you bet. I've dreamed about living and working on a space station literally uh, since I was a kid. And so this is a dream come true for me. I'm enjoying every bit of the, the trip up here and indeed enjoyed the two and a half year training road uh, to the, before launching and coming up here. So this has been great. I it's, I'm, would uh, be more than happy to stay here a bit longer. And Mr. Burbank, we're not going to leave you out, but I got to ask a couple Aggie questions first. How are you possibly going to move from this quiet location, relatively where you are now, to an Aggie football game in just two days after you land? How are you going to handle that? I am afraid I'm going to have to going to have to watch this particular game on TV. I've enjoyed watching the games and game highlights up here through the season. It's been a hard season. But, uh, you know, all diehard fans are, are watching and cheering no matter what. Uh, so there's no way travel time you could possibly find yourself in that stadium in that short amount of time. But I, I, I heard originally that was the plan. Hi, Alex. When we were coming home about a week earlier that we were definitely uh, holding on to that thought and would love to do it. Uh, we'll have uh, family and friends at the game, but uh, it's a little too quick after getting home for me to uh, try to uh, uh, mingle with uh, 85,000 people in Kyle Field, much as I'd love to be there. Would it be too much culture shock if you did? Oh, we're, no, we're not talking culture shock. That's the, that's 85,000 family members there, no problem at all. It's just uh, the, uh, the, the rehabilitation takes a little bit of time, and I think uh, two days after getting home is a little quick to uh, try to venture out that much. Exactly. And what is the most difficult part of being uh, in space for five and a half months? Uh, uh, isolation up there, uh, the amount of time it's going to take you to recover, and uh, your advice for uh, Mr. Burbank as he begins his stay on that score. Score. You bet. Uh, for me, the hardest part is just the separation from family. Uh, it, you, we stay in touch, email, phone calls, and a weekly video conference. But my family, uh, my kids, some of my kids are older, married, and out of state, and uh, with and I have a granddaughter now. So it's uh, missing out on being there for the family events like that. It's probably the hardest part. Uh, professionally, it's it's awesome. It's been a, just a wonderful experience. And my advice for Dan is enjoy every bit of every day. Though there, anytime you know you think that uh, you're getting a little bit frustrated, uh, get a grip, because you're in the most amazing place imaginable, working in the world's premier laboratory, in orbit, you know, 240 miles above the Earth. There is just it, this is an amazing place, and what a just a, a great experience it is, every bit of it. And Mr. Burbank, if I can start with you, uh, where are you guys physically right now in ISS, and uh, where uh, in orbit are you? Okay, right now on the ISS, we're in the U.S. laboratory, Destiny. So we're probably about three-quarters of the way from the very furthest aft part of the space station to the very furthest forward part. And uh, this is where most of the, the American science is done in this laboratory right here. 
as far as where we are over planet Earth, frankly, we've been so busy lately, I couldn't tell you. The window that we would ordinarily be able to look down and look through right now has a science experiment in it and it's closed up. And we've got computers that'll often tell us that. If we were right now in node three where the cupola is, it would be almost effortless because we'd have a 360 degree view of the world scrolling by beneath us. But I, I couldn't tell you right now, I'm embarrassed, to, t embarrassed well, to say. And I have to say that we're so busy with just a few days of overlap up here, handover time. Uh, they, just, they didn't schedule in window time. We get that later at night uh, once the regular work schedule is complete as we did last night and enjoyed uh, the, Dan's first right. look out of that uh, panoramic view from the, the cupola, which is just absolutely stunning. And uh, we look forward to uh, more of that to this evening after the uh, work's complete. And a question for both of you. Uh, I've got to ask you to compare your, your various rides uh, up there. Uh, uh, compare shuttle to Soyuz, given that it's your, your only way to and from now. Your thoughts on that? Well, my, my first two flights were on a, on a shuttle, of course. As far as just the experience of the ride uphill, I'd say the acceleration, the sensations are, are very similar. Um, the shuttle's a little bit more uh, spacious inside, so there's it's a it's a yeah. different experience as far as the yeah. crew is, and and it goes. We've got if you're on the flight deck on the shuttle, and if you're, for example, sitting in uh, the mission specialist number two seat, you've got windows all along in front of you and windows directly above. Um, when the Soyuz launches, you're in a much smaller capsule. The windows that you've got initially, at least the beginning of the ascent, are uh, actually obstructed by um, by a fairing that covers the entire uh, spacecraft, uh, the the Soyuz capsule if you will, that's on top. So until that actually separates, there's no, no view outside. But when it does, it's spectacular. We went from basically leaving the pad and uh, blowing snow and, yeah. uh, and uh, cryogenically induced, you know, from the propellant on the rocket, cry cryogenically uh, induced fog that was very dense, and it being night, at least when we boarded the vehicle, to after a couple of minutes after launch, suddenly just blazing sun, you know, sun shining through the windows, looking at the earth starting to descend beneath you. It was uh, very impressive, very neat. And for both of you, I believe, Mr. Fawcett, I'll, I'll have this, to say, this will be your first, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I flew uh, also uh, two times on the space shuttle, and for me, I felt on the, on the shuttle, the launch, you really feel the massive uh, vehicle underneath you. There's a whole lot of uh, weight, uh, you know, and, and you feel that this just massive energy underneath you, uh, you know, it's, it's really a, a flying truck. Uh, with, uh, you know, huge power. The Soyuz felt to me uh, like uh, it was a, l a little more nimble, more of a sports car kind of feel, and it certainly feels like it. Everybody's in a, quite literally, a bucket seat, and it's it's tight, and it's like uh, three big guys in the back seat of a Volkswagen. It's kind of what, uh, what it seems like there. You're you're, uh, you're uh, in there very tight, because it's a, it's a very efficient way to move people to and from the space station. Not a lot of cargo. There's, uh, you know, a few hundred pounds of cargo, which is very valuable but that's not its main purpose. Its main purpose is hauling people, and it's good at that. Uh, the, the ride up was, you know, the, the, uh, there, were, there were some differences. The ride home is, uh, by all accounts, haven't yet experienced it firsthand, not for another few days, but uh, a very different ride home, uh, where the shuttle comes in uh, like an airliner uh, as the Gs build up, as you, as you come in like that, sitting in a seat for a shuttle crew member. Uh, for here, you know, we're, we're on our backs, and we'll be feeling the G's through our chest. Uh, and the, the big difference, though, instead of gliding down to a runway and setting down you know, in a, in a gentle type fashion, it, we land under parachutes and the parachute opening shock and the dynamics of that parachute opening, the repositioning, uh, et cetera, is, is described as uh, quite significant and memorable, as well as the, uh, there's uh, soft landing rockets that go off just above the ground to uh, to begin that final deceleration before you thunk down and uh, you know and uh, you know you're back on Earth. And we've, we're limited on time here. I think we're less than two minutes. But I got to ask both of you: Does it trouble either of you that that is your only way to and from ISS now? Your your thoughts on that? And then the final question will be an easy one for Mr. Fossum. I need a prediction for the game. Um, as, as far as your uh, your first question. 
I think in general it, it behooves all of us to have as many ways to get to and from space as we can. And I'm encouraged by the fact that shortly, uh, in the next couple of years, we probably will have a whole suite of different vehicles and options to get to space. Um, coming back, I think uh, a capsule is a very reliable, very quick way to come back, and Mike kind of described it for you. But uh, So I, I'm not worried about that part. And I, I do think that we'd need an American capability to launch humans to and from space, uh, to get to and from space, to get to and from the space station. I think it's an obligation as a space station partner to have a redundant capability. Uh, in case there's a, uh, a, d a delay or a problem with the uh, with the Russian system, and we saw a potential, you know, significant setback after the the Soyuz booster failure on the Progress launch in August that delayed Dan's arrival by a couple of months. If that was a little bit longer, then we would be turning out the lights figuratively up here, and uh, nobody wants to do that. Uh, as for the game, hey, Aggies are going to win that Thanksgiving game, hands down. Look forward to it. Gentlemen, thank you. It's been an honor talking to you. Uh, best of luck up there, and uh, your stay and uh, Mr. Fossum coming home. You all take care. Thank you much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. reconfigure video and audio communications. Roger that, standing by.